Hello, I'm Karen Fury. I'm here with Drs. Michael Hill and Mayank Goyle, co-PIs on the Escape NA trial. Michael, can you describe the rationale for the Escape NA trial? Well, uh, after the uh, dramatic developments of endovascular therapy, um, the question was what to, to what to look at next. And actually, both Mayank and I and our group in Calgary were involved with a company called Nono Inc. and they had a new compound with just a number called NA1 and this compound was um, was neuroprotective and the experimental data suggested that it worked really well in an ischemia reperfusion model and what we both quickly put together was that really what had happened with endovascular therapy in human stroke was that we now really had a true ischemia reperfusion model in humans and so the natural thing to do was to, was to move forward with a study looking at NA1 in humans. And that was the ESCAPE NA1 trial. Great. Maya, can you describe the study design? So the study design was all patients underwent endovascular treatment. All patients had a large vessel occlusion. In some ways, you can think of it, the control arm of ESCAPE NA1 was the treatment arm of the ESCAPE trial. And just to remind you, ESCAPE trial was the one of the trials from five years ago that was published in the New England Journal. And there we had a simple criteria of CT multiphase CTA in terms of imaging. We made the criteria a little bit lenient compared to the ESCAPE trial. Those were the patients who were enrolled into the ESCAPE NA1 trial. And then they were randomized to the treatment drug, NA1 or nirinotide versus a placebo. And then it was the standard 90-day modified ranking as the, as the outcome. What did you find? So, uh, as we've said, it, it's fascinating. Um, overall, in, in all patients, the trial results were neutral. It was a 2% effect size uh, on Rankin 02, which was the primary outcome. However, we anticipated that uh, there would potentially be differences related to whether the patients received uh, routine care uh, alt-place, uh, so thrombolysis. And what we found is quite a dramatic difference the patients who received alteplase had no effect at all of nirinotide, but in the group that did not receive alteplase, about 40% of our population, there was a dramatic treatment benefit, about a 9.5% overall effect size, uh, an absolute risk benefit on the Rankin 02, and a mortality benefit, um, so a 7.5% reduction in mortality, a reduction in infarct volumes, and all of the secondary outcomes following the same direction. So quite a interesting result. We, we think that really it tells us that it is possible to achieve neuroprotection in humans in that ischemia reperfusion model. Is there a biologically plausible explanation for this finding? Yeah, so I th I, we think it is, and obviously we'll need further studies to confirm that, but the current thinking that we have is that uh, the TPA or alteplase activates plasmin, and plasmin actually deactivates the drug, um, NA1 or nirantide, and that is, I think, what is causing us to not be able to demonstrate an effect in the patients who received alteplase. As a subset of this study, we did uh, uh, collect blood sam plasma samples to show demonstrable, uh, to show whether there's any interaction, and we don't have the full data as of now, but hopefully that will further confirm the fact uh, that, um, practically speaking, anyone got deactivated in those patients who received multiplase. Can you tell us about the safety of the drug? So in, in addition, yeah, the safety was, um, was a, great, a great profile. So the, the certainly serious adverse events, there was no difference between the group that got nirinotide or NA1 and the group that got placebo. The known side effects of, of the drug are related to um, histamine release. And so we did see some patients who had flushing, a little bit of transient hypotension and this kind of thing. But it was actually all quite minor. And so while it's certainly true that the drug has a, a, you know, a safety profile that appears to be very well tolerated in stroke patients, and so we don't anticipate any, any future trouble. Well, you're right. These findings are very interesting. What are your next steps? Well, the, the, the first thing, obviously, is that uh, we have to look at it closely. Um, right now, we're presenting the high-level results. We have to look in terms of um, um, subgroups. It's a big data set, 1,100 patients that all went endovascular thrombectomy. 
The second part is um, that, uh, that we think there's a biologically plausible reason for this effect and the effect is substantive. So a lot of it is going to be driven by um, what is it that we need to do to get this drug to, to humans. And uh, we'll have lots of discussions internally and then obviously with organizations such as uh, FDA. And that will actually direct to us what the next steps could be. Um, at the current moment, um, we are very, very hopeful that, uh, that this drug actually translates in some way, shape or form immediately or in the near future to actual uh, regular use. Well, these are really fascinating results. They will undoubtedly generate a lot of discussion. Is there anything you'd like to add before we close? Perhaps just to say thanks to all the, the, the teams and uh, the patients who were involved in the trial. Mm -hmm. It was a massive effort uh, with uh, including 48 sites around the world. And so, uh, so thanks to everybody for working so hard on the trial. And um, like Mike says, so there will likely need to be n new studies and, and future study before we get this to, get this to patients formally. And so, so get ready, we're gonna do it again. Great, thank you both very much. Thanks very much. Thank you.